All right, today's video is all about purchasing vacant land here in North Idaho. If you've been wondering how to do that and what the process is, we're gonna school you up today. So stick around, we got tons of great info. Let's go. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel, be sure to subscribe, tap that notifications bell so you can stay up to date on all of our latest content. We get calls, texts, and emails literally every single day from people just like you trying to learn more about North Idaho, thinking about making the move. So don't feel weird. Shoot us an email. We'd love to get that conversation started sooner than later. We are here and we will have your back. All right, vacant land in North Idaho. A lot of people have the dream of the Idaho dream coming up here, buying your five, 10, 20 acres, building your compound, your families, everything else. So we do a lot of vacant land as well. And there's a lot of things to keep in mind. The first thing I would encourage you, not selfishly, but have an agent, have somebody to represent you. There's a lot of things that I've seen go wrong. People buying landlocked properties, not being familiar with the area. Let us help you with that because we wanna make sure that you make an informed decision when you're buying a property. So we have 10 things we're gonna go over today. Before we do that, I do wanna say that there is a lot of, there's a lot of land up here, but it's not as cheap as it used to be. I'd say on average, if you're looking at a good five acres that's treed, level, buildable, access to utilities. If you're looking for that and it's something that's within 15, 20 minutes of downtown Coeur d'Alene, you're probably looking in the mid 300,000s for that vacant land. As you go further north, you will find that the prices do dip a little bit, but if the price looks too good to be true, there's probably a reason. So give us a call and let us help you out with that and explain why. So before we go any further, we're on number one, we're gonna talk about zoning regulations. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're buying land up here. And one is that what zone is it in? Is it rural, is it residential, is it commercial? Whatever it might be. For the most part, when you're looking at a five acre parcel, 10 acre parcel, it's probably gonna be zoned enough to where you can build what you want. However, with those restrictions, a lot come in the CCNRs, county regulations, city regulations, and there's some stuff that we wanna make sure that you're aware of. First of all, CCNRs up here, People are always afraid of CCNRs, governing documents that limit what you can do with your property. Truth be told, most of the acreage up here, what's the most common thing you see with CCNRs, which we love? Yeah, it's the it's protective CCNRs, right? They limit how far you can subdivide that piece of land. That's a good thing. Yep, you don't want to buy five acres and then find out that all the five acre parcels next to you all get subdivided and now you have track homes next to you. So many of the CCNRs will limit certain things like that. They do limit some commercial uses sometimes, but a lot of times when you get a little further out of town, really the only regulations are the fact that you can't minimize the size of your parcel. You can still a lot of times have cows, goats, horses, chickens, shoot on your property. So there's a lot of stuff that you can still do, but it's important to get a copy of those CCNRs and review those. Yep, because you will find occasionally out even farther outside of town, you're gonna find some CCNRs that might be too restrictive for what you're looking for, like the shooting thing. There are a couple of pockets out there, a couple of neighborhoods that uh, even though the lots are big enough, shooting is prohibited on your personal lot. And a lot of people moving to Idaho, that's the dream, right? Shoot and pee off the back deck. Doesn't get any better than that. All right, second consideration is location, right? We get these calls all the time. It's usually a retired cop and he's like, hey, stick me in the middle of woods. I don't want to be near anybody. And then we'll have that conversation. Like, all right, man, hey, you've been doing the job 30 years. You kind of need to be close to a hospital. I don't want you to be two hours away from the hospital, right? We start having these conversations and then and then it, then we can kind of narrow down that specific location that works best for you. And sometimes that's sitting in the truck or car with us and, sorry, and driving around up here and exploring the different areas and kind of learning, you know, you can look at a map all day long, right? But when, until you have boots on the ground and you're, and you're driving around, you're understanding the lay of the land and how long it actually takes to get from here to there, that's the important thing. And there's so much to consider. I mentioned the hospitals, right? That's a big one. You've got the Spokane International Airport. Some people need to be within a certain distance of that. You've got restaurants, coffee shops, gas stations, shopping, grocery stores. That's Yeah, I think you hit on the main thing is that you want to, when you're looking for land, talk to us about what you want around you. What do you want to be close to? How far to the movie theaters? How far to shopping? How far to downtown? How far from a lake? That will help us 
dictate the areas that we need to search to help you find a property. Yeah, you might want to live in the middle of nowhere, but your wife needs to get to hot yoga three times a week. Number three is topography. First of all, rule number one, do not buy land sight unseen. You know, it's different when you buy a house, especially during the COVID era when everything was so fast paced and you were able to do a virtual walkthrough. It is not the same with land. You need to visit the land. It's one thing to get a piece of land under contract, but we want to make sure you have a contingency in place to where you can put, like he said, boots on the ground and you can see the property. If it's cheap, we're talking about topography. If it's cheap, there's probably a reason. There's a lot of three, four, five acre parcels out there, but there's only about maybe 0.2 of an acre that you can build on. And that may not be what you're looking for. If it's cheap, it's steep. Unless it's on the lake, then it's like that. steep and expensive. It's super important, right? You can look at a topo map all you want from home, but until you get there, you will see like, oh, okay, that is actually a lot steeper than it appears on a map. And, and, you know, we do videos all the time for residential stuff, and we can do that fairly successfully and really give you an idea of the house. But when it comes to bare land, like I can't capture on a video how steep that property nope. is or, you know, the little nuances of each property. It's just not gonna come through. So you really do need to get up here. We walk properties with people all the time. I've done it in snowshoes. So we're happy to do that with you for sure. And kind of, you know, at least help locate some of those property boundaries and really get a feel for that land. Cause it's important. All right, number four, utilities. This is a big one. A lot of bare land comes with nothing on it. Of course, if you find one with a well, that's great. But for the most part, they're gonna be just bare land. Usually power is pretty close by. That seems to be pretty common up here, which surprises me. Sometimes you'll be pretty far out in the woods and there'll be a power box right there and they brought power in underground at some point. So that one is usually available. Oftentimes you will not have water on the property. So you're gonna be looking at the cost of drilling a well. And then septic. Septic, especially on these lar larger lots, is usually easy to do and you're not gonna have any concerns there as far as putting in a normal septic system. If you're on that waterfront lot that's super steep, you're going to have to put in an engineered system for the most likely, or you know, you're going to have a system that pumps it up to a higher location. So that will be different considerations than a big chunk of five, 10 acre piece of land. Yep. And so this is where you want to make sure you're familiar with it because there's vacant lots right now in the city of Spirit Lake. Spirit Lake, from what I'm still told, has a moratorium on hooking up to the utility systems up there. So the water system and the sewer system up there. So that's a big problem. People have called me about properties within Spirit Lake, the city limits that should be hooked up. But because they haven't upgraded the system in a long time, there's a moratorium right now that's not allowing you to necessarily make those hookups. So you buy a piece of land there, it might be five years, 10 years before you can build on that. So that's really important to know. The other thing is wells. Wells, whether you're on the aquifer or somewhere else, we don't really know. We can look at well logs, we can give you a good general idea, but a well could cost anywhere from $15,000 to $75,000. And that's a big unknown cost. So if you're buying a property, I would encourage you to look for something that already has access to water, whether it's a community system, a well, city water, whatever that might be, because that takes the unknown out of it. It might be worth it to pay a little more for the property and know that you have water. It's a big stressor. Pro tip, there is a website called Idaho Well Logs that you can go on to, and we use this all the time, and you can pull up and see all of the wells in the surrounding area. So it can kind of give you an average of well depth in that particular area that you're looking at. So that's a great tool to use it as well. Yep. And lastly is utility easements. I've seen this happen before. Somebody goes and buys a property and they say, there's easements. We have an easement to it. Well, you have to look into the easements because there's different types of easements. Just because you have an access easement doesn't mean you have a utility easement. This has happened to people before where they buy a property that they're legally allowed to get to, but you're not legally allowed to draw your utilities across, which basically makes it an off-grid property unless a neighbor is willing to grant you an easement, which usually costs money. So be aware of that as well. Number five on our list is natural features on the property. Obviously there's water, trees, all those things. Seth will talk a little more about those. My biggest natural feature that I talk to clients about is Southern face versus Northern face. In Idaho, winter months, there's very little sunlight. So if you are on a North face, you may not see the sun for six months. And that's something that can lead to ice on your driveway, extra snow, late melt off, 
So it could be a big difference when you're looking at the house across the way that's sitting in the sunlight and has no sun on it and you're still buried under two feet worth of snow because you bought on a north face. There are times the north face works, but usually it requires a little more clearing to the south and you try to get a little more sun in your house. So consider what type of face you're on and how the sun is gonna work in the winter specifically. And touching on those natural features, they are going to cause the price to fluctuate, right? If I've had people ask me this, hey, two lots side by side, why is this one $50,000 more? It's got a year round creek on it. So looking for those kind of natural features and maybe that's something you want. I mean, it's pretty desirable to have year round creek or pond on the property, right? That that presents a lot of opportunities for you down the road. Also waterfront properties on the lake or the bigger rivers as well. Like that is going to cause price to be higher something to consider timber that's another one to consider sometimes you can sell off some of that timber if you're on a big you know five ten acre lot you can sell off some of that timber to the local mill and you can offset some of the cost of having to put a driveway in or putting a well in so having that ability is pretty nice and that's something you need to balance out when you're looking at price or even a timber exemption which you can do as well which yep. is going to save you a lot of money on taxes i believe you need to have a minimum of six acres i think that's right to get a timber exemption in idaho environmental factors Number six. So this is really important because there are some areas here in North Idaho that this can really play into the property that you're looking at. Some of these factors are you've got the Silver Valley. The whole Silver Valley and parts of Coeur d'Alene are considered a super fun site. Not super fun. Super fun yeah. is super fun, but... <laughs> it's a federally designated area for cleanup because of the mining operations there in years past. There are a large amount of heavy metals and other pollutants in the soil and some in the water. So it is something to consider. They've done a ton of cleanup and it's considered safe at this point, but it's it does factor into some people's decision in certain areas. They don't want to be in that super fund site. Yep. So if you go to buy something in the Silver Valley, we will even give you a pamphlet and a disclosure that's going to give you more resources so you know what the challenges could be in that area. Ultimately, I haven't seen anybody with three heads yet here, but it could present a health challenge. So make sure that you look into that. The other thing is wetlands. When you're talking about environmental factors, a lot of people see this land and they're like, man, this is great. It's on the side of the Coeur d'Alene River. But most of it, if you're going to build there, one, you're going to have trouble with septic. OK, it is a flood zone. So there is a possibility that if you're going to build a house, you're going to have to get special permitting and you're going to have to put the house on stilts or it's going to have to be a raised foundation. So that's going to create a lot of issues as well. So if you find land and you're like, and this is beautiful, it's along the Coeur d'Alene River. There's a reason why it's so cheap. OK, number seven is going to be surveys and boundaries. So it's atypical, I think, for most land purchases for people to actually go do an actual actual survey. The time that surveys would be really important is if you believe there might be an encroachment or there's a question as to the boundaries. Now, if you're buying a five acre parcel and somebody else has a five acre parcel, there's no fencing, nothing up, nothing that you think would encroach, likely looking at pens and figuring out any sort of boundaries that have already been set there, that should be fine. But if you believe you're looking at an overhead shot on, what is it? Uh, what's that hike? Onyx or land glide, or we see something in title where it looks like maybe a, a barn or or something is hanging over onto your property, you may want to consider maybe a survey on just that line. Larger parcels, if you're buying 100 acres, 200 acres, it may behoove you as well to do a survey because the land mass is so big. You want to make sure what's on it and what's not. So consider that because I've dealt with a lot of encroachment issues, especially downtown, believe it or not, not even on vacant land, but purchases downtown where in the good old days, early 1900, you know, Joe puts his, they, they say, hey, here's the property boundary. And somebody puts something there. And then a hundred years later, we find out that they built, you know, a shop or a shed or something. And it's on the other person's parcel. So all things that you want to know ahead of time, not something that you can't overcome, but you're going to want to be made aware of it. We've had pretty good success hiking properties and either finding it flagged already or finding those corner pins. And it's like a metal pin in the ground that is very obvious once you find one. Using apps like Onyx can get you pretty darn close too. So I use that app constantly when I'm out in the woods show property. You know, you're within 10 to 20 feet. It's not like a spot on super exact, but at least it will help you kind of identify 
a rough corner and really get a lay of where that land is. And one thing that we always do in our contracts when we're buying vacant land is we add a clause to encourage and require the seller to provide easily identifiable boundaries so that you can see those before you move forward with the purchase. All right, number eight, legal considerations. So a lot of this can be handled by using your realtor and the title company and they will identify, title does a title search every time you go to purchase a property. That's part of the process. And they will identify any easements, liens, encroachments, anything on there that is already registered, they will be able to find and will let the agent and the buyer know. So that's important information to pay attention to for sure. We wanna make sure that you do have the right easements. Obviously, we're always gonna make sure that it can actually be, that the title can be conveyed, but we wanna make sure that there's nothing else that's gonna prevent you from doing what you want on your property. Number nine on our list is future development. This is super important. There's a lot of development going on in North Idaho. And I think a lot of people that want privacy don't want to buy a house and then find out next year that they're putting a massive development or commercial right next door. 41 in Prairie right now, that's a developing area in Post Falls. I sold a few homes in that area because people all of a sudden walked out of their house and they saw Highway 41 getting widened. They saw that there's a big project, commercial project going on at 41 in Prairie, and they don't want to be right next to that. They don't want to be at city center or around all of that. So it's important to make sure that you look at future development, know what what's going to go on nowhere. If there's schools that could possibly go in, in your area, parks, it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing, but make sure you know what is going to develop around that area before you buy. And that was a big factor in me moving out of downtown Coeur d'Alene was starting to see the number of condominiums and expansions to existing buildings that were going on downtown, which is really just changing the whole landscape down there. Still a wonderful place. But now I'll just go visit and I won't live there. We don't have a crystal ball, right? We know a lot of the projects that are coming up, but 10 years down the road, it's really hard to tell. So, you know, there is that caveat that we'll do our best to let you know what developments are potentially coming down the pipeline, but really hard to tell 10 years down the road what's gonna happen. North Idaho is growing rapidly. Number 10, the last thing to consider when you're buying vacant land is the resale potential. Now I know you're hundred percent in, you buy your property and you're going to build there, but things change. People move up here, they live in a trailer on the property, they're driving into town and all of a sudden they say, hey, this is too far. Make sure you're buying something that has good resale value. Things to consider is a lot of people will buy that land and they start putting in wells and electricity or they start building. You may want to make sure that you're buying something that's in a good area that would be more feasible for a lot of other people. If you're going to be really specific on buying a piece of property and understand that it's also going to have to be really specific for the next buyer. So if you buy something that, for example, there's some areas in Athol going up where all the utilities are included, that includes natural gas. That's a huge thing for a lot of people to not have propane, have water, electricity, and natural gas. The resale value on those properties will always be better than your vacant properties that need all of those resources. So consider that just in case you change your mind. Thank you guys for joining us. I hope you got some excellent information about buying vacant land here in North Idaho. Dave and I do these deals all the time and we would love to help you if that's your dream. So give us a call, text or email, and we'll help you make that smooth move right here in North Idaho.